Hi, welcome to Project Geospatial. I'm Adam Simmons in Pasadena, California at the iGARS 2023 conference uh, hosted by GRSS. Uh, I have two very special guests with me. First time I'm meeting them, uh, one from the uh, uh, ladies of Landsat, do I have that correct? Or over here, there we go. You, you both have the stickers on too. Um, and, and, and then Sisters of SAR, since I've never met you in person, it's like, oh wait, which one's which? Uh, Sisters of SAR and Ladies of Landsat. So really awesome to get all of us here in one group. Uh, uh, not very often I get to meet uh, all the other podcasters from our geospatial community, so really cool. Uh, so with that said, let's uh, get some introductions. So we'll start with you. Okay, I'm Laura Dingle Robertson. I'm a research scientist from Environment and Climate Change Canada, and I am a co-lead and co-founder of Sisters of SAR. And I'm Morgan Crowley. Um, I'm a research scientist with the Canadian Forest Service and also a director, co-director and founding member of Ladies of Landsat. Excellent. So uh, with uh, that said, what brings you to the IGARS conference and how many times have you been here? And uh, yeah, what, what, uh, what brings you to Pasadena? Well, yeah, it's for the IGARS conference and mostly um, to make connections with the folks here and present some of our new work in wetlands mapping in Canada. And uh, I think I've been to IGARS in person three times. So one in Quebec City, one in Japan, and now here. So. And this is my first IGARS. Um, I came because I work with the Wildfire Sat uh, mission in Canada. So I'm presenting on some of that work, but also presenting some research that we've done with Sisters of SAR, um, some kind of social science-y takes. Um, and I'm really excited about IGARS because of all the work that IDEA, the committee, is doing. Um, and that's been kind of what brought it to my attention uh, the first. <laughs> Firstly. <laughs> Firstly. <laughs> Well, well, great. So as you've been as you've been walking around the conference, what would you say is your highlights? I'm sure you've seen some interesting discussions, uh, technologies even, um, and uh, even if you haven't, what 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 would you have hoped to have seen? Well, the the number one thing on my mind, and probably everybody's saying this, is this uh, presentation by, and I only know people by their handles, so at Lori of Mars, the director of uh, GPL, when she talked about this mission to Mars to get rock samples, and it just blows my mind what GPL can do and what they dream up of, and that they're going to be trying to do this in the future. And then I think seeing the NISAR model also was a little bit blow mind blowing. SAR is very, very important for wetlands. So uh, we're frantically waiting for it to arrive. And then um, we were at a IDEA event yesterday, the Unconscious Bias uh, seminar, where they talked about implicit bias. And that was very eye opening. And I think a lot of people need to sort of start thinking about that. Yeah, I guess it's a different type of advancement, but on the idea side that um, integrating feedback into the conference organization and the professional organization broadly, um, having the president of IEEE GRSS at the events yesterday, taking feedback, meeting with us, um, it's just uh, a really novel thing about this professional organization and conference, having um, family rooms, lactation rooms, childcare, these are things that we as, as organizations keep asking for, and this is uh, a pretty exceptional conference to be able to see that in action. So, sure. yeah. <laughs> so any technologies that impressed you here? I mean, I've been uh, really, I've been attending SAR talks, which isn't my necessarily my domain of expertise, so it always blows my mind, um, <laughs> like Laura's talk and uh, the wetlands uh, the wetland session. Um, I've been really excited to see the different uh, integrations of like deep learning into uh, larger scale projects, I guess, because um, oftentimes when I see it, it's just small little one-off um, instances, so that's been really exciting to me. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm an applied person, so I am most excited about the applications than I'd say the technologies. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, so one big aspect, uh, Landsat 9 just launched this last year. So what do you think about that? Yeah, pretty awesome. Um, it's, <laughs> it's uh, so I uh, don't use Landsat exclusively. I really think on the virtual constellation level and to be able to integrate all the Landsats together with Sentinel-2, to be able to have, you know, it's no longer that Landsat's only a once a week acquisition. We can have this pretty much continuous um, time series of observations, optical observations. So um, even though I work in coarser scale, observations for fire monitoring in Canada now um, thinking about how we can integrate that like fine spatial resolution data into our workflows is is so exciting because we can depend on Landsat for that now. Yeah. 
Excellent. So uh, for you, uh, there are a number of SAR constellations that have come online the last couple of years. Uh, a couple of those companies have made some major waves in terms of not just their uh, technology, but also their business model to help the community out. What do you think about those? Um, actually, it was kind of funny. So we have scientists, one who was supposed to be here and presenting uh, today with me, but uh, an emergency sent him up to Churchill, Manitoba, where the polar bears live. And uh, we were working with Capella to get imagery over, over top of him at low and high tides in order to look at saltwater marshes. So um, their model uh, for us uh, as, a, as a government entity and trying to map at national scales is interesting. It's great for testing. It's great for these, these things where we need the temporal repeat of that kind of satellite constellation. So um, it, it's been really great and they've been really helpful and we have gotten our data and I've met a couple of the folks here and it's been, you know, for us, it's been awesome. Excellent. So as we wrap up, I have two questions for both of you. First is, uh, uh, for those who have never attended an IGARS event, what would you say for next year, attend IGARS, why? Because it's in Athens. <laughs> Uh, other, th other than the awesome vacation spot in Greece, right? I think it's the networking and the connections that you can make at IGARS and being able to meet other people across the world in your field and be able to exchange those ideas. Yeah, for me, it's like I'll go to really applied conferences and have to like explain why remote sensing is useful. And I get to jump through all of past that for this, right? Everyone knows the importance of what we're doing and we can really get into the nitty gritties of it. So it's it's an exciting conference for me as a first time attendee. Excellent. And the last question is uh, more generally for uh, students in high school or even uh, college students who are graduating who don't necessarily understand uh, what opportunities are out there. What words of inspiration for the general geospatial industry or community as a whole would you give them to say, hey, these opportunities exist? What kind of community this is? What words of inspiration would you say to join what we're doing uh, in this sector of, uh, well, humanity, right? <laughs> Well, there's a lot of things that you can look at from outer space. And I think that the opportunities are only getting bigger. I started in the field in undergrad many years ago, not many years ago, but maybe 20 years ago. And um, yeah, it's the amount of stuff that has changed just from the fact that in my master's, I used a one Landsat image that was purchased. So the openness of data now, the amount of data now, the ability to do cloud computing, there's just, there's no limit. There's no limit. Yeah, and I guess I, I come from like actually a Bachelor of Arts background, so I um, am kind of a non-traditional remote sensing scientist um, who's like arrived here on this path. And so I think that for students in high school, like it's following what you're most interested in and excited about. And there's so much, like Laura said, that you can do in this field. And there's no really right path because we need some people from every different background because someone who maybe works in economics can bring a whole new lens to remote sensing someone who doesn't have programming but might be really uh, knowledgeable about like the um, on the ground conditions all of those things are so important in remote sensing and geospatial sciences and so it's it's a really welcoming group um, that's really making a difference yeah. excellent so uh, and then finally what's ahead for both of you for both of the uh, podcasts that you run Oh, well, okay, so <laughs> Sisters of Star, we will, in the last year, uh, or the last six months, uh, three of us started new jobs, and one of us is doing a PhD, so we're trying to scale back a little bit and just try and keep up with what our original mandate is, which is to promote women in SAR, to promote SAR science, um, and just try and focus on that and, and look at some collaborations where we can help each other through sort of this these stressful times where everybody's super busy, so yeah, that we're just kind of staying the course right now. <laughs> Yeah, similarly for us, we're really looking to expand our leadership team to have new perspectives, like a new generation of leaders, so that we can bring ladies of Landsat into the future and match, you know, what folks are experiencing in the field today that might be different from us as like more mid-career scientists, yeah. I guess. Um, and with uh, seen from above in particular, the podcast that we've collaborated on between our organizations, um, that will have another season coming up this fall. And um, we have some really exceptional Brazilian scientists who are taking over the interviews. One of our top um, listened to episode this last season was actually the one done in Portuguese, and it had an enormous impact. So we're really excited to see where they bring this in the next stage. And um, yeah, yeah, it's it's awesome. Awesome. <laughs>
Well, thank you both for joining me. It's a pleasure to meeting you both finally, actually, after uh, tracking what you all are doing for years. So um, I'm Adam Simmons of Project Geospatial here at uh, IGARS 2023. We'll talk to everybody next time.